As excited as I am for Google's Agent Development Kit and OpenAI's Agents SDK and all the other frameworks that are out there for building AI agents, I'm equally as excited for MCP, Model Context Protocol, and what that means and the developments that are happening over in that world as well. And I think even more than that, the beauty and the magic will really start to happen when we increasingly start to use all of these things together in tandem integrated with one another and see what that's really capable of. I've seen a lot of examples on YouTube with MCP, but they've really been focused on Claude, the desktop uh, app specifically, or maybe some other clients out there. And so I wanted to take the time to make a video and share using MCP servers, uh, but inside of ADK, so Agent Development Kit. So let's jump over to my uh, VS Code project that I have here for this agent. And I'll walk you guys through the project structure and the agents that I've created, the tools that I've made available to it. And then we'll actually jump into the web interface and show you that in action and actually working as I hope and have intended it to actually work. I have my agent. This is like, I guess the equivalent to my main file, I guess for this agent specifically. I wanted to keep the, the file is actually pretty clean here. So what I have in this one is simply a function call to create root agent, which we'll jump into in a second here. And this is gonna be, kind of what you need in any case when you're dealing with sub agents or multiple agents. You need one agent that is going to be the delegator or the orchestrator of the entire team. This agent here is gonna be responsible for delegating based on the user's query if it determines that one of the sub agents is better equipped to actually handle that query, it's going to actually delegate to them and they will assume full responsibility for um, working on that task and actually responding with something of value. We create an async function here called create root agent. Then we go ahead and we also use awaits. So we go and get our, our sub agents here that we're gonna use shortly. And then we go ahead and create our agent. We determine what the model we want it to be. I'm keeping it simple and just using this one across the board. I've got a name for it, which is root agent. And basically what I've said is that this agent is the general assistant that tries to understand the user's needs and then delegate accordingly. And the instructions that I've given to this agent are, you are a helpful assistant who tries to understand the user's request and delegates to the most appropriate available sub-agent. Here are the sub-agents available to you for delegation. Number one, the FS agent, which special, specialized in uh, interacting with the local file system. Number two, uh, web surfing agent, which specialized in navigating to and interacting with websites given a URL. And then we go ahead and we use these agents that we created up here. We go ahead and we provide them as sub-agents uh, to our root agent here. And then we just return everything. Let's jump into a sub-agent here. So this is gonna be the first one that we've got. This is the create uh, FS agent, so create file system agent. We go and we get the tools. So we'll jump into the tools in a second here, but we go and get the tools. We're using an MCP server for that. We're using the same model. We give it a name of FS agent. And then we give it the description of assistant who specializes in interacting with the user's local file system. And the instructions to this agent are, you are a file system specialist who helps the user quickly interact with the directories and files in the, in the directories available to you. Uh, and then I'll show you that in a second as well when we get to the tools. You have the following tools available to you, FS tools and MCP server, which exposes additional tools for interacting with the local file system. Let's really quick, just go and look at our web surfing agent. Same kind of thing here. We give our MCP tools uh, to that agent in, in this case, a function call. And then this agent's description is an agent or an assistant who specializes in navigating to and interacting with the provided URL. The instructions are, you are a web surfing specialist who helps the user quickly interact with the web pages hosted at the provided URL. You have the following tools available to you. One, web surfing tools, an MCP server which exposes additional tools for interacting with the web pages. Upon receiving a URL, navigate to the web page and summarize all of the text. We're gonna see that in action in a second here. Now let's jump into the file system. I'll just go in order here. The file system tools that I used so I gave a little description here using doc strings, and then we are using from uh, ADK tools and then MCP tool set. We're getting the server there, and this is a local server. We know it's a local server because it uses the command NPX, and we pass in a, uh, an actual like repo uh, or a pack, NPM package um, for, for, what, for the server basically wherever this is hosted. And it'll go and get that down. 
and then we'll be able to interact with it. And I'm providing uh, the, the directory, which is basically just this project here. So uh, ADK. And then we go and return those tools, which of course then we had over here, FS tools, and we're able to provide those tools to, uh, to the agent. Now let's look at web surfing. Similar thing here, although we need less arguments, but in this case, we're just getting the Puppeteer MCP server also using NPX. Now it's important to note that at the moment, because there have been some parts of the MCP spec that have not been fully defined, or at least they were defined later on, specifically authentication or, and authorization, um, those things have not really been as widely supported. So most clients right now, including ADK and Claude Desktop, uh, will really only support right now uh, local MCP servers, which means that it can't really interact with a, a remote API just yet. It can really only do stuff locally, such as working with the file system, operating a browser, things like that. Th there are like document documented um, examples of using a remote uh, MCP server, but I can confirm that they don't work yet because I've tried to do them. That was originally what I wanted this video to be, and they're not quite there. There are some bugs that I think are being worked through. But nevertheless, I'll make a video, uh, another video, as soon as those things actually work. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this type of content. Let's go ahead and actually see this thing in action. So what we're gonna do here is, and I'll just go all the way back, we're gonna run ADK web. So you do have to have the ADK uh, CLI installed. We will reload this in our browser. So let's try uh, what directory does the FS agent sub agent have access to? Don't have that information transferring you, okay. So the FS agent has access to the following directory. That's correct. That is the one that we provided here. So that's good, that makes sense, right? Uh, what directories, what is in that directory? Let's see. Here's a list of the files. Oh, and it actually gives us files and directories. So that's cool. That's pretty nice that it does that. Awesome. So we can see here that we've got access to that. And let's say um, create a new file in that directory called hello world, maybe you should put that in quotes, hello world.txt and write hello YouTube in the file. Let's see what happens. Write file, created a, all right, let's see what happened here. You can see it's green. So it looks like it did it, so that's pretty cool. So we were successfully able to interact with the directory just based on that. That's awesome. Let's, uh, let's refresh this. And now what I wanna do is have it go to a website. We'll see it pop up here. Uh, and then it can actually tell us what's in that website based on what we told it to do basically inside of the tool. Okay, so after a little bit of technical difficulty, it was basically making stuff up uh, no matter what the URL was. So uh, I gave it the URL for my website, Kulam AI, link in the description, little app that I'm working on to help build uh, agentic apps with no code. And uh, it basically just kind of like was making stuff up. And so I don't know, maybe there were other businesses with a similar name or even the same name in other countries or other industries. And it was sort of just taking that and adding it into uh, its summary, regardless of what was on the actual site. So what I did, was I added here, only base your summary on the content found on the loaded page, nothing else. Let's see how that goes. Hopefully this works, because it did before. So this is kind of one of the things that I guess are a little tough about using LLMs, um, is that one, your, your instructions need to be very specific. So I actually had to go and revise these instructions quite a few times. Um, and secondly, it's not always deterministic. Actually, a lot of times it's not deterministic and you kind of like that sometimes. There are parameters that you can use to make things more or more creative, the response is more creative. There's also, therefore, the other, the other direction, which you can do, you can kind of adjust those same parameters to make things a little bit more deterministic. I didn't adjust any of the parameters here um, and I got some very interesting answers. Either way though, uh, we were able to navigate to a um, 
to a website here and actually interact with it or try to interact with it in this case. If it was something a little bit more uh, contentful, if that makes sense, you could have uh, clicked on buttons and entered text in the form fields and stuff like that. So you could have it, for example, log in somewhere and go and interact with your account or something like that. Uh, so that would be kind of cool if you could do that. Uh, but of course, then it's it's quite difficult because you're just relying on giving like written instructions. It's kind of hard. But anyway, um, if you're interested in this kind of content, definitely subscribe to my channel. Check out the links in the description below. Uh, Kulam AI is going to be ready shortly, sometime soon, hopefully. Uh, and also, uh, you can join our Reddit community. Link in the description as well. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.